you're Kaz and Kat, right now is the first moment before the end of your life. The Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, Kaz and Cat is in big trouble. We are one space away from the time when someone is to be eliminated and she's still way far behind everyone else. Um, I went ahead and done all the Seven Wonders cards and Runt still has the um, scientific advantage. So unless something can be done to get rid of that, which it is possible, if someone sends a hero into Runt's capital and does some sabotage, um, she they could get rid of one of her science cards and then she'd no longer have the advantage. That's really unlikely though. They'd have to get into, uh, where is it? Caucasus Mountains right here. And I don't think anyone's even close enough to do that. So I'm, I think it's pretty foregone that this is going to be Kaz and Kat's last turn. She's playing on anyway. I mean, she made her selections before that, was, that card was even revealed to her. And she's going to have to live with it, and so are the rest of us. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So, we were just going over together um, what option she had for start Empire cards. And I found this, Step Nomads. Initial cavalry, co cavalry cost two, one elite marker. That just gives you a bonus when attacking or when in combat. One free maneuver after setup. Okay, so this is this is turning out to be the perfect the perfect card for her so far. So they're, they're gonna actually get to do something after they get set up. And they get they can set up in any step area. Steps are um, these right here. This is where a lot of the steps are in the world. I don't know if there are steps anywhere else. I think that's that's all of it. It's right here. Um, notably Mordovia. Then lower Empire's progress by one if you liberate a land from it this turn before age four can vacate areas. So she has a chance. <laughs> I mean, all she has to do is beat one of um, Run's people. She can start out right next to them. Uh, it'll be tough, you know, they have a good defensive bonus. Um, and they, they're going to have a military advantage with those shields there. But unless Runt has a military card, that's not going to make a huge difference. She might actually stay in it this turn. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> it's like the, she couldn't have asked for a better card for her current purposes. Life's funny. I want to say before we get started here that this is still a long, long shot for Kaz and Kat. Uh, she's going to maybe be able to prolong it for one turn, um, especially if the Amazons aren't trading, which she doesn't know if they are or not, but we do. They're not. Um, but still, that's, that's only going to be a one turn. She's still going to be behind. Now, the nice thing is the Step Nomads do get uh, a point for every land they take from someone else. So she's she has a chance to get in three points off of them. She's she's doing three different attacks this turn here, here, and here, and she's got decent odds in all of them. This one's a little worse than the rest, but luckily she has this card, Sappers, that should help. Um, still, so let's see. This one's going to be a three to one odds. This one is also three to one odds, and this one's a five to four odds, I believe. So let's do those rolls right now. And we'll take a look. Combat ratio. Oh, but she can't use the sappers because, yeah, Runt has the higher amount, so it's a one to one. That's what it's going to be. Um, yeah, she uh, Runt has uh, more shields, so so she can't use the. The step nomads have no shields. She can't use that card. Um, so let's do the ones that are. Let's do the smaller ones first. We'll start with this one here, three to one. Roll on our little table. Basically, she needs a high roll because she, if they um, survive, she's in trouble. That's um, NN, so nothing happens. Runt can decide if she wants to retreat. I think she does. She really doesn't want. Um, she doesn't. She doesn't want her to take this for one. That's gonna hurt her. But she also doesn't really want Cat out of the game. She doesn't. She doesn't relish that idea. Um, okay, so that retreated to here, where there's going to be a fight going on there. And then we have another 3-to-1 fight there. 
I looked at the wrong column before, actually. Half defense. Yeah, okay. That one should have been killed. Sorry. Sorry, I was looking at the one to one instead of three to one. This one should be gone. That's a half. I'm going to say they survived that. I don't know. Uh, it's very um, unscientific way I'm doing this. I apologize. Okay, another three to one. This one in the north. That's another same result. And I guess we established that it would be. But here I'm going to have one of them actually die. So that's going to die, and then she'll let this one die. And then we'll have this one to one fight here. And here she really wants a high roll. I always I watched a video about how dice are made, and it makes me paranoid of dice um, because it showed how the polishing process makes it so that certain dice um, favor certain rolls, and that makes me I, I never really trust them, especially if I get the same number over and over. Like I got three, two threes. If this is a third three, I'm gonna feel really bad about myself. All right, a one. That's not good for. Our heroine, Kaz, and Cat. So half the attacking force. No, all the defenders are gone. I have a hard time reading this. Um, it's not. It's not complicated. But I'm just. It's just how my head is. Attackers resolved. It's the first one. All the attackers are gone, and then half the attackers. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So that was not a good roll for her. All of these guys are gone, and then Cat is gonna lose half these guys, which isn't that much. She's going to go, I guess the archers, they're, they're less versatile. So she had two points off of that, and um, actually both for fins go down a progress, and then also runt. Cowboy has Indians. We have our first empire here in the New World. Uh, they look like, they don't look like Native Americans, but they are. Little Red has his new empire, the Saxons, here in Germany. Uh, here's a case where it probably would have been better for him to wait. He's just stuck these guys right in the middle of everything. I mean, he's got, he's got Runt to his right, Giraffes, Romans to his left, and they need to, um, they need to take over Britain in order to to get points that's their main score I mean they can score in Europe as well but Britain would be easier to have the majority in Britain than it would to have in Europe but they can't really they don't have clear access to Britain right now and also um, they get a they get a nice uh, they get a hearty discount on ships on boats but not until next age. So if he had waited a couple turns, if he really wanted to have the Saxons, he could have brought them out, had the boats, and just, you know, headed off to Britain. But as is, he's kind of in the middle of everything. His other choice was the Greeks, which would have been down there. The Greeks didn't do so well last time, so <laughs> he didn't go with that. Um, still, might have been better to wait for another empire or to um, wait to, to play the Saxons. But... Little Red likes to do it now. All right, and we have scored for the turn. Um, big scores by both Runt and Giraffe. Difference is Giraffe need to use a couple cards in order to get it. She had a couple of these uh, cards that double your glory, essentially. One of them doesn't totally double it. It doubles the numbers here, um, which enabled her to get more glory, and then she doubled on top of that. So. That that made her catch up to Melky. Runt, she just got straight up ten just from just from she earned every bit. You know, just from her her empires. And then she's also pulled ahead on this labyrinth here, so that gave her an additional point. Um, bad news for Ka. She got some points from the step nomads earlier, but you know, uh, Flush, who was uh, the next closest one to her, he jumped up. So now she's got to try to overtake Little Red, who's still 10 in front of her. Um, Progress-wise, she's you know she's got one. She's in the, kind of the same straight she was at the beginning of this turn, unless she can <laughs> make Runt really severely disable Runt now because Runt Runt to currently has let's see that's four plus seven uh, eleven science points no one's even close to that really i guess there's someone at seven yeah the harappans um unless she can cripple one of her science cards 
or do something else to knock her back, uh, it's going to be really hard. She may have just, I mean, she very likely just prolonged her life. We'll see. Let's do another turn. So we're about to start the next turn. This time it's going to be Milky, who is our start player. And I just wanted to point out that Cat has another chance at delaying things. Uh, she's, but again, I, I don't, I don't think there's really a lot of hope for her to get 10 glory. Um, and that's, you know, Little Red here is a moving target. Uh, she would need to get more than 10 glory likely in order to prevent herself from dying. But she's going to try to cling on and here is her one hope. It's another sort of case like before where she has, the, she kind of got the perfect thing. She got, add again the mouse here, um, who has two, two different traits that are useful to her. One, Adigan can uh, is not impeded by by woods like other player uh, other heroes would be. So that means Adigan can make it to one of Runt's cities um, prior, you know, before the turns up in just one move. Okay, made a move last turn, moved from here all the way up there, all the way up through there. Um, reason why I was able to move through all this enemy territory is Adigan's also very stealthy. It's a tiny mouse and so can hide very hard for armies to find a tiny mouse. And so if she can get there, she can um, sabotage one of Runt's science cards. Runt won't be having the automatic progression. Runt's not really trying to progress and finish it for Cash. She's kind of an interested in seeing how Cad deals with it and just kind of playing her side. If she felt, you know, if someone was starting to catch up to her through progress, like if the Harappans, for example, were to trade and progress a move to, she might decide to, to trade and progress on her next turn, but she's in no hurry. Um, she has other things for the Amazonians to take care of, uh, primarily this large stack here that's going to, of little reds, Saxons, that are going to be looking to spread out. Um, and she just has to, she wants to maintain her large Amazonian empire there. So she has that to deal with. So, uh, you know, I, I think there's a chance Cat could last beyond this turn. But then, you know, it's still just shooting, just clawing, clawing in the dark for survival. It's been a quieter turn of just kind of production and recovery so far. Um... Not a, a lot of kind of rebuilding back. The Chins are are recovering and and ready to to take over China. Uh, well, I mean they kind of control China now, but they don't control any of the meaty areas with all the wheat. I guess I should say the weedy areas. The Chams they um, they could have actually uh, put out a lot of units, but Little Red held held back because the Chams they they score based on money and. By not producing so much, he got to have a lot of money, and so he's likely going to get two points off that. Um, you know, these guys produce the the Amazons, building back, uh, preparing for the Saxons and whatever else might happen. Um, it's it's fun. She has uh, the Amazons have some some different unit types than the others because they're further along, so she can have the the big swordsman guys and the the catapults and whatnot, and that's kind of neat. So, got some new unit types on the board. Um, also, a lot of trading and progressing this turn. We see a lot of people moved into H2. If you notice uh, inexplicably that certain leaders are gone, that's because when they, they move up in age, unless they can play a certain card, and I think there's maybe two of them, uh, the leaders pass away. Um, they have like a thousand year lifespan or something like that. It, they, they can live for an age and then they go away. So the Pharaonic Egyptians uh, lost both Beowulf and Minx and Jinx, who they had, uh, which is kind of, it's sad. But um, when they go into Era 2, then they can build bigger cities and, you know, they need to do it in order to get better units and to get a larger empire because, you know, you only have so many of certain units you can have. So a lot of people produce this turn. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but it seems like I kind of ch choose similar actions for people. Like, I don't know, last turn I did a lot of discard empires, or not uh, the turn before last. And that's just, uh, I don't know if that's the flow of the game or the flow of my mood, or both. Probably both. So now Cowboy's maneuvering. 
He's doing a 50-50 shot on Slush here. He might uh, exterminate both of them. But if he does, that's still helpful to him because he'll get the... Uh, he won't even get the to score those, will he? Well, he might. He might. Yeah, yeah, because he'll have two. Um, yeah, if he does, he'll get to score over Flush. Flush's Syracusans. He might actually get two even if he didn't do this fight, but he's doing the fight. That's just the way Cowboy is. So two boats here. Uh, yeah, they have the same strength. There's nothing special about either of them. Um, I don't think Flush has any cards to play. Let's see what we roll. And that's a five. That's good for Cowboy, I do believe. One to one, five. Um, what's D? Lose as many points. Okay, so it's a they. everyone's dead kind of thing. It is do or die time for Kaz and Cat, um, and more specifically, Attic and the Mouse. It just it just occurred to me that it's funny that there's a cat and a mouse working together. That's uh, that's the cartoony uh, joy that can be found in the real people multi game solitaire mega tournament. Uh, she did something kind of fun before um, before she before we deal with this actually. Um, she used a bit of treachery to get rid of um, Flush's forces in the in, in Andalusia. She actually was hoping uh, this arrow thing didn't mean that he could retreat through Gibraltar, but turns out he could. Um, if, if he wasn't able to, they just would have died. She would have defeated all his units. So she didn't even have to use that much to get him out of there. Just a card uh, and a maneuver action. Now she has to roll. Now, so... Adigan the mouse has successfully sneaked, snuck o over here. It was white against um, blue. Roll for every space, basically. So it had to get 10 or better. Now um, Adigan has to use its intelligence to see if Adigan can successfully sabotage. Um, so it has a blue intelligence. And the difficulty, because Runt has four shields here, the Amazonian Empire is blue. Here's my my great little table. I just this is pretty arbitrary. I this is the one case in the game where I couldn't really do any do the the symbols relative to something else um, because I needed to get a particular color rating for this to work. So I just kind of like I just kind of made some numbers. I don't know if they're great numbers or not, but blue. Uh, if you have four shields, that's blue. And so we'll roll. Blue against blue is seven. We'll say if she gets the seven, she doesn't get caught. Um, but she also isn't successful. Um, so she really has to get a six or lower. Otherwise, she's going to lose. She's going to be eliminated. Four. Wow, Adigan was successful. So what that's going to mean is Adigan can get rid of one of these. Um, so he really has to get rid of one of these two, the workshop or the apothecary. I think the apothecary is more fun. You can imagine a big explosion of chemicals as the mouse escapes. Um, I have to decide, and this is something I haven't decided yet because this is the first time this has happened. Does Adigan get to stay there? I, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Whether Adigan gets to stay or whether Adigan is dismissed. Um, I guess I've kind of established that they get dismissed. So Adigan can go to the whatever location of its own empire as he wants. That's just kind of the Duel of Ages way of doing things. Maybe Adigan will go down here. Kaz and Cat Step Nomads just did a bunch of things. They adopted Confucianism, they adopted democracy, they made a peace treaty with the Amazons, and they constructed the Temple of Diana. Uh, that gave her essentially four points, which is pretty good. If she if she had any means of scoring other than getting artifacts, Cab might still be in this game, but she had she happens to have two empires she can't score off of. Even if she had one with the little house, these are pretty common. That means if you have your homeland, you get a point. See here, see all of these have that. You know, she'd be scoring points all this time, but she. She doesn't have an empire like that. There's one that does it, the Saxons. But you see that the majority do have let you score off of owning your homeland. 
uh, she'd probably, you know, might have a chance of not being eliminated because she would have been scoring all this time. But as is, she can really only score by creating new artifacts, and there's a finite number of those per age. So there's only one Temple of Diana. If you have the Temple of Diana, then no one else can have it. Um, you generally, I think, can only get these if you already, and if a, a new religion and a, a new government, if you um, don't already have one. So she's, you know, despite how hard she's trying, I think she's kind of stuck. She's had to spend so many turns with the pirate state just moving Adigan the mouse over um, that she hasn't really been able to get the boats she needs to take, you know, sea, sea areas. Uh, so it's troubling. So it's time to score now. I'll, I'll come back and let, let you see how things are going. So Milky, who's been the leader for the, the game's majority, has finally fallen. Um, he's no longer leading. Nah, he's only back by two, but he's been surpassed by both Giraffe and Runt, and they both are consistently scoring better than him, so I don't think he's going to reclaim that anytime soon. His big chance still is the Irish. If they can become Christian, um, that will be big for him. And the Babylonians, they have a lot of scoring potential. He's just not been able to to lead in any of these things. He hasn't been doing bad in it, all of them. If he got a few more artifacts down, for example, he would um, be doing well, and you can always get more money. Early Finns still needs to employ them as a hammer somehow. Um, they're actually, you know, they have some good territory. Um, they have a, a good number of, of things, and they're not really contested by anyone. But they're having a hard time in, in where they are in their progress. They don't have a, their, their low counter mix is hurting them. Um, what else? Uh, Cowboy did very well this turn. He, he scored six points, which is, you know, that's not as much as, as Runt, but that's about what Giraffe scored. So he, he shot ahead there. Um, it's very tentative, though, and partially due to turn order that he did as well as he did. Uh, the Phoenicians just barely had these two points, the Europe and the world. If, um, if someone else was ahead in turn order, that wouldn't be the case. Uh, what else? Um, Cass still not scoring. Flush isn't doing that great either. Um, neither is Little Red. He's only scoring off of his chams. The Saxons still haven't made a payoff. He's going to need to start trading with them. He really needs to jump them up to error two, and then they're going to have some more advantages. Still not huge, but that's going to put him head to head with the Irish, which should be interesting um, for control of Britain. Ah, I was sure. I was sure that. Um, our Kaz and Cat would be, this would be her final episode uh, of, of this leg. You know, she's, she's going to come back in outdoor survival and maybe survive to go on to careers, but who knows. I, it just, it just, it, it goes to show me and perhaps you why, why I enjoy um, creating stories through games because I really can't predict no matter how sure I am, even though I'm playing all the sides of what's going to happen. And I, I start to construct a narrative, oh, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. The, the game, the interactions are too complex for me to uh, predict, and that's always exciting to, to be able to see that unfold, and also to participate even as it's unfolding. So that's, that's one big reason I do this, and why I might recommend it to you. Um, we'll see if Kat can hold on another turn. I really don't see another... Well, actually, she might hold on for a while now, unless... Um, Let's see, it would depend on, we have two more, two more Seven Wonders cards before we get more dealt in. Um, it, it's kind of up to Runt. If Runt decided to trade, or if someone just decided to trade with her, um, it's it's over for Kat. As soon as someone decides to, tr you know, make Runt progress. Um, we'll see if, if anyone does next time on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Pope Leg. Seven by seven ages.